These stories are so strange and surreal that they defy the boundaries of imagination. Yet, believe it or not, every single one of these mind-bending details is rooted in absolute reality. Today, we will dive into some of the most unbelievably true stories. This is the second installment of the Weird But Real series. But before we jump in, remember to hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications to stay up to date with the channel. Adam Rayner's story defies the odds and challenges our understanding of the human body. Born into an average-sized family in Graz, Austria, in 1899, Adam's journey took a remarkable turn as he faced an extraordinary medical condition. Despite his parents' love and support, Adam's stature remained significantly below average as he grew up, standing at just 4 foot 6 inches tall by age 16. Yet, Adam refused to let his height define him striving to pursue his dreams even in the face of rejection. When war erupted in 1914, his determination led him to attempt enlisting in the army, only to be turned away due to his perceived physical shortcomings. But Adam's resilience knew no bounds, as he persisted in his efforts, undeterred by setbacks, and determined to prove that size was no barrier to greatness. At the age 19, Adam Rayner stood at a mere 4 feet, 8.3 inches, a height that officially classified him as a dwarf, but little did he know, he was about to venture on an extraordinary journey that would defy all expectations. Not only would he surpass the threshold of average height, but he would become a giant himself. Despite his diminutive stature, there was something remarkable about Adam. His hands and feet were anything but small. Already rocking a US size 10 shoe when he tried enlisting, his feet ballooned to a staggering size 20 just three years later. To put that into perspective, Basketball Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal wears a size 22 shoe and is over 7 feet tall. Now that's something to wrap your head around. When Adam was young, he looked like he was always wearing huge shoes because he didn't grow much. He was skinny and had trouble gaining weight. People thought he'd always be short, but when he turned 21, he suddenly started increasing a lot. By age 33, he was super tall, reaching 7 feet, 1 inch. Growing so much so quickly was exciting, but it also brought problems. Adam developed a severe curve in his spine around 1925 to 1926, which caused him a lot of pain and trouble. Sadly, this spinal issue stuck with him for the rest of his life and made things more complicated for him. Even though Adam was already much taller than most people, his height kept increasing without any signs of stopping. Doctors couldn't figure out why he was growing so much. That's when two doctors, A. Mandel and F. Windholz, decided to investigate. They wanted to understand how Adam had changed so dramatically quickly, so they studied him from August 25th, 1930, to May 23rd, 1931. The doctors, Mandel and Windholtz, checked Adam's height and found he was 7 feet, 1 inch tall, but due to his bent spine, his official height was 6 feet, 9.1 inches. They wondered what caused such a significant change in Adam. They thought he had a special kind of tumor that caused a rare problem called acromegaly. This condition happens when a tiny part of the brain makes too much growth hormone, making people grow a lot. It's scarce, only affecting a few people per million each year. Beyond its profound impact on height, acromegaly also influences the size of hands and feet, elucidating Adam's peculiar proportions before the rest of his body could synchronize with his rapid growth. Adam's face and height changed a lot. His forehead and jaw stuck out more, making his face look longer. His lips got thicker, and his teeth were further apart, all signs of acromegaly. Although it's not of Adam Rayner, a picture shows how acromegaly can change someone's face. After studying Adam, Mandel and Windholz confirmed their idea. Adam's unusual growth was caused by a tumor that caused his body to produce too much growth hormone. Nowadays, acromegaly can be treated better than in Adam's time, but sometimes people don't notice the symptoms right away. There's Anton de Frankenpoint, whose skeleton was shown in 1596. He's believed to have been eight feet tall and was nicknamed Long Anton because of his height. Then there's Robert Pershing Wadlow, the tallest man ever recorded by doctors. When he was last measured in 1940, he was just under nine feet tall at eight feet 11 inches, like Adam Rayner grew so much because of a problem with his pituitary gland. 1975 Guinness World Records recognized Sandy Allen as the tallest living woman. Standing at an impressive seven feet seven inches, she had already reached 7 feet 1 inch by age 16. Yao Defen's record-breaking height of 7 feet 8 inches surpassed Sandy Allen's, highlighting the ongoing fascination with individuals of extraordinary stature. Today, medical advancements offer surgical interventions to manage conditions like acromegaly, 
but in Adam Rayner's era, such procedures posed significant risks. Despite the dangers, doctors proceeded with the operation to remove Adam's tumor on December 2, 1930, conducted by Professor O. Hirsch. While the tumor was successfully excised, Adam's challenges persisted. Following surgery, his spinal curvature worsened, indicating that his growth had not ceased. Over time, Adam's health deteriorated further. Vision loss in his right eye and hearing impairment in his right ear compounded his difficulties. Additionally, eating became arduous, and mobility diminished as his spinal curvature intensified. Eventually, Adam became bedridden and reliant on assisted living. He died on March 4, 1950, in Vienna, Austria, at age 51, measuring an impressive 7 feet, 8 inches tall. Adam Rayner's remarkable journey from dwarfism to gigantism within a single lifetime is unparalleled. Despite the tragic end, his story underscores the resilience and complexities of the human body. It's a testament to the extraordinary capabilities and challenges individuals can face. In a recent criminal investigation in Finland, authorities stumbled upon an unexpected clue, a dead mosquito found in a stolen car. While seemingly insignificant, this discovery proved crucial in unraveling the case. The police used the blood from the mosquito to identify a key suspect, ultimately leading to a breakthrough in the investigation. This demonstrates how new tactics and seemingly minor clues can lead to significant discoveries in criminal investigations. Indeed, this remarkable story underscores the importance of innovation and creativity in law enforcement. It highlights how thinking outside the box and leveraging new technologies can lead to breakthroughs in complex criminal cases. Additionally, it emphasizes the growing role of forensic science in modern investigations, showcasing how even the most minor pieces of evidence can hold valuable insights when analyzed effectively. The inquiry began after Finnish police discovered an abandoned stolen automobile in a rural place. When they looked closer, they found something unusual, a dead insect caught inside the truck. While it may have appeared minor initially, this minute bug quickly became necessary evidence. Recognizing the mosquito's possible importance, forensic specialists harvested DNA from its blood. Police used blood from a dead mosquito discovered in a stolen automobile to identify the key suspect. Despite the unconventional nature of the method, they recognized that even the tiniest bits of genetic material may provide vital information that could help them solve the case. The specialists retrieved DNA from the mosquito's blood with precise precision, using modern forensic procedures to assure accuracy and dependability. The procedure was tedious, but the potential payout was significant. The opportunity to find critical information that may shed light on the perpetrator's identity. When discovering suspects, authorities are always searching outside the box. In the past, police in Italy, for example, have used a severed finger discovered at a murder scene to help them find an escape suspect. However, the Finnish police used a dead mosquito to aid their investigation. The bug was discovered in 2008 while police in Lapua, Finland, were investigating a stolen and abandoned car. Mosquitoes are the kings and queens of stealth, so that alone is astounding. When police spotted the insect, they thought it was full of life and wondered whether the person who stole the car had been bitten. After being analyzed in a lab, it was determined that the mosquito's DNA match was on file with the police. When he was brought in for questioning, the suspect, whose blood had been drawn, protested that they had not stolen the automobile. They stated that a male driver had given them a lift. A judge was left to determine whether or not the mosquito evidence was admissible at the time of the inquiry. At the time, police officer Sakari Palomayeki remarked, a police patrol inspected the car, and they noticed a mosquito that had sucked blood. It was sent to the laboratory for testing, showing the blood belonged to a man in the police registers. It is not easy to find a tiny mosquito in a car. This shows how thorough the crime scene investigation was. It is not usual to use mosquitoes. In training, we were not told to watch mosquitoes at crime scenes. Sakari Palomayeki. It's unclear what the investigation's conclusions were, or whether the investigators were able to use the insect's blood sample as evidence after the incident occurred some years ago. Unilad has contacted the Finnish police to inquire about any updates to the case. It is vital to ensure that the person you are locking up is the right one, not only because it will influence the individual's life but also because it might lead to a significant lawsuit. It was discovered recently that Clarence Moses L. had wrongly served 25 years in prison and was later granted an enormous $2 million in damages. In 2016, Moses L. was acquitted of all charges in a retrial after a second guy confessed to the assault. At the time, he said, 
This moment is a moment I've fought for a long time. I want to get home to my family and my grandchildren. It's wonderful. I have waited a long time for this. Clarence Moses L. The use of unconventional evidence in criminal investigations. Using mosquito blood as evidence in a criminal investigation may appear unusual, but it emphasizes the need to explore all possible avenues when investigating crimes. In today's world, when technology and forensic science rapidly evolve, law enforcement organizations continuously seek new ways to acquire evidence and establish cases against culprits. This case exemplifies the imaginative attitude of law enforcement experts who are ready to think outside the box and use unexpected clues to solve even the most brutal crimes. It also emphasizes the rising relevance of forensic entomology, or the study of insects in criminal investigations, in contemporary crime-solving efforts. The successful conclusion of this investigation demonstrates the value of teamwork between law enforcement organizations and scientific professionals. Investigators were able to transform a seemingly unimportant tip into a critical piece of evidence that eventually helped bring a criminal to justice by leveraging the most recent developments in. Furthermore, this case highlights the connection between science and justice. In today's environment, when the barriers between disciplines are more blurred, law enforcement organizations must adopt multidisciplinary crime-solving methods. By using the knowledge of scientists, forensic analysts, and other professionals, they can improve their chances of resolving complex criminal cases. The story of Finnish authorities using a dead mosquito to crack a case underscores the indispensable role of innovation in law enforcement. As criminals adapt and employ increasingly sophisticated methods, law enforcement agencies must continuously innovate to keep pace. The internet has become a place for weird stories. People have infinite freedom to express themselves and share their life stories, allowing for the development of undoubtedly interesting, if not chaotic, stories. Perhaps it's no surprise that Marina Chapman appears to be different from the rest of us. She claims to have grown up with monkeys during her early years. Only monkeys. She claims to have lived deep in the Colombian bush with no human companionship for around five years. She is unclear because there is no accurate way to measure. She remembers learning to fend for herself by eating berries and roots, grabbing bananas dropped by monkeys, sleeping in tree holes, and going on all fours. When hunters rescued her, she claimed she had entirely forgotten her language. And that's when things became very rough. She claimed to have been sold into a brothel in Cucuta, lived as a street urchin, and was enslaved by a mafia family until being rescued by a neighbor and relocated to Bradford, Yorkshire, which is where we find her now. It's an implausible narrative, and many people have decided not to trust her. Most publishers refused to handle her next book because they suspected she was a fraud. The girl with no name undoubtedly poses intriguing concerns about authenticity and memory. Is Marina Chapman a fantasist who has inflated her history, or a childish lady attempting to make sense of an extraordinary childhood? In one of the book's most famous passages, she tells how she contracted severe food poisoning from tamarind and feared she was going to die. She groaned in pain until an elderly monkey, whom she now names Grandpa, took her to muddy water. She drank the water, vomited, and started to heal. After that, she claims that the young monkeys befriended her. Marina watched them intently and learned from them how to climb trees, what foods were safe to eat, and how to clean herself. She quickly realized that if she stood beneath monkeys carrying armfuls of bananas, they would inevitably drop a couple, and if she was quick enough, she could catch them for herself. According to her, the monkeys eventually permitted her to perch in the trees. She became lonely while they were out hunting for food and waited eagerly for their return. Did she think much about her human family? It's weird, she says. She can't remember anything before the kidnapping. God knows she has tried to remember. I keep working on it, but there is nothing. I've tried to envision it several times. She says she is troubled by the thought of her grandchild erasing her daughter's memories. Marina Chapman claims she was four years old when she was abandoned in the Colombian rainforest. A family of Capuchin monkeys took her in and taught her how to live. Born in Colombia in the mid 20th century, Chapman's life took an astonishing turn when, at the tender age of five, she found herself abandoned in the jungle. Alone and vulnerable, she was forced to rely on her instincts to survive in one of the most unforgiving environments on earth. Chapman's early years in the jungle were marked by hardship and peril. She learned to navigate dense foliage, evade predators, and forage for food. Yet, amidst the dangers, she discovered unexpected sources of solace and companionship. In her memoir, The Girl With No Name, Chapman recounts forming a bond with a troop of Capuchin monkeys 
who accepted her into their midst and taught her crucial survival skills. Living among the monkeys, Chapman adopted their behaviors and instincts, becoming adept at climbing trees, communicating through gestures and vocalizations, and identifying edible plants and fruits. Her remarkable ability to adapt to her surroundings allowed her to thrive in the jungle, despite the absence of human companionship. Chapman's life took another extraordinary turn when she was discovered by hunters and sold into servitude. After enduring years of exploitation and abuse, she eventually escaped and found her way to Bogota, where a caring family took her in. It was here that Chapman began to experience a semblance of normalcy for the first time since her abandonment in the jungle. In Bogota, Chapman faced the daunting challenge of reintegrating into human society after years of isolation and trauma. She struggled to adjust to the complexities of human interaction and communication, but her resilience and inner strength propelled her forward. Despite the odds stacked against her, Chapman was determined to achieve a better life. Over time, Chapman's resilience and adaptability served her well as she navigated the ups and downs of life in Bogota. She found employment as a maid, and later as a nanny, where she poured her heart and soul into caring for the children entrusted to her care. Chapman discovered a deep reservoir of love and compassion within herself, despite her tumultuous past, which she generously shared with those around her. Chapman's life took another unexpected turn when she met John Chapman, a British diplomat stationed in Colombia. The two fell in love and embarked on a new chapter together, eventually settling in the United Kingdom. Here, Chapman finally found a sense of stability and belonging, surrounded by loved ones who embraced her unconditionally. In her later years, Chapman reflected on the extraordinary journey that had brought her from the depths of the jungle to the comforts of suburban life in England. She marveled at the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity for redemption and renewal. Despite her hardships, Chapman remained grateful for the second chance at life that fate had bestowed upon her. Today, Marina Chapman's story continues to captivate and inspire people worldwide. Her memoir, The Girl With No Name, has touched readers' hearts with its message of hope, resilience, and the enduring power of the human spirit. Through her remarkable journey, Chapman reminds us that no matter how dire our circumstances may seem, there is always hope for a brighter tomorrow. Before we dive into the last story, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means everything. Bill Morgan's story is remarkable, often cited as a tale of incredible luck and a twist of fate. In the late 1990s, Australian Bill Morgan had a run of terrible luck. Morgan was involved in a severe car accident that left him clinically dead for 14 minutes. Paramedics managed to revive him, but he fell into a coma for 12 days. He was wounded in a car accident while working as a truck driver, resulting in a cardiac ailment. Then, he developed an adverse response to the medicine used to treat the problem, resulting in a heart attack. Bill Morgan was clinically dead for 14 minutes before being resuscitated by doctors and remaining in a coma. When he finally woke up, he faced a long and challenging road to recovery. His ordeal took a toll on his health and finances, and he was left with a mountain of medical bills. But despite the odds stacked against him, Bill remained resilient and determined to turn his life around. After waking up from his coma, Bill faced not only the physical challenges of recovery, but also the daunting financial burden of his medical bills. The accident had taken a toll on his health and left him with injuries that required extensive medical treatment and rehabilitation. As he slowly regained his strength, Bill was confronted with the harsh reality of his situation. The mounting medical expenses threatened to overwhelm him and he struggled to find a way to cover the costs. Despite the immense pressure and uncertainty, Bill refused to give in to despair. He drew strength from his loved ones and the support of his community, who rallied around him in his time of need. With determination and perseverance, Bill began to rebuild his life piece by piece. He embarked on a rigorous rehabilitation program to regain his mobility and independence. Each day presented new challenges, but he faced them with unwavering resolve. Bill's positive attitude and resilience inspired those around him throughout his recovery journey. Despite the setbacks, he remained focused on overcoming adversity and reclaiming his life. Incredibly, days later, Bill not only awoke but recovered completely. During this challenging period, Bill decided to try his luck with a scratch-off lottery ticket, hoping for a glimmer of good fortune amidst the hardships he faced. As fate would have it, that decision would change his life in ways he could never have imagined. And he was correct. Within a year after his coma, Bill had been engaged to his future wife, found a new job, and won a $30,000 Toyota Corolla in the lottery. 
It hit me like a ton of bricks, he stated after the second victory. When a local TV station requested Bill to reenact his narrative, he won another jackpot directly in front of the camera. The remarkable video of him sharing his happiness with the reporter, still widely shared online decades later, shows Bill fainting into a bookcase after he understands he has won. Staff at the news agency cracked a bottle of champagne to celebrate, and Bill contacted his fiancée to tell her the good news. The couple used some of their profits to buy a property, and the remainder to invest. Bill's story is truly a remarkable example of the power of resilience and the unpredictability of life. It's inspiring to see how he refused to let adversity define him, instead choosing to confront his challenges with determination and optimism. Despite overwhelming odds, he didn't lose hope or give up on his dreams. This resilience paid off most unexpectedly when he defied the odds not once but twice with his lottery wins. In 2020, Bill was discovered to be 59 years old and still living in Melbourne with his wife. He reflected on his two victories, calling it an incredible time. Twelve months before I had the win, my heart stopped, and my life was over for 14 minutes and 38 seconds. Every week, I purchased Tats Lotto and a $5 scratchy. I still do it now. So, I bought this scratchy and stated aloud, I think I've won a vehicle. Sure enough, I did. It wasn't a huge thing to me once the media and the television stations learned about it. They assumed it was a good luck story, and that's how it all began. Bill claimed that reporters from the TV station assumed he was kidding when he initially declared his second victory. Even though heart issues and arthritis had taken their toll, Bill said he still felt fortunate. I'm either on the highest of highs or the lowest of lows. Although he suffers from a combination of heart issues and arthritis, which forced him to retire early, he stated, I've had a bonus of 22 years, and that's the way you have to live your life. Every day, I get up and put on my shoes, and even if I'm not well, I shuffle down the road and smell the roses, look at the sun, and think about how lucky I am. He continues to buy a scratch card every week. His story reminds us that even in our darkest moments, there can be rays of hope and opportunities for transformation. It underscores the importance of maintaining a positive outlook, even when the road ahead seems daunting. Bill's journey is a shining example of how strength of spirit and a never-give-up attitude can lead to incredible outcomes against all odds. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, then check out these videos on the screen now. If you have a topic suggestion, please send it to the email in the description. As always, remember to like, comment, share the video, and subscribe to our channel. I will see you in the next one.